Hi guys, Dan here. I'm doing this. I'm doing this in English. Two newspapers already asked me what are my three top tips for podcasting. And I have way more than three tips. But I'm gonna do a course, Podcasting 101. And this is Lesson 1 Enthusiasm. If you like this, share it, subscribe to it. It's, it's gonna be extremely minimalistic. I'm using LibreOffice Impress. These are just points for me so I remember what to talk about. So ignore the visual if you have to. But today we're talking about enthusiasm. Your enthusiasm is your number one resource. Without your enthusiasm, you can't make a podcast. It's one of the things that make podcasting fun. And we'll talk about having fun and podcasting later. But the number one advice I have is to be, make sure you are enthusiastic about your subject. It has to be this way. You have to feel strongly about the subject that you are podcasting about. And true interest cannot be faked. Maybe you notice that some subject is not covered by a podcast, but you can't be the one to cover that subject unless you're enthusiastic. In theory, you could probably be like skilled at podcasting and then find someone who's truly enthusiastic. But in the end, that person will bore you and boredom kills podcasts. So you have to do everything not to be bored by your podcast. So some tips, there are probably more tips. You probably have tips, share them in the comments. But some tips to build enthusiasm for a new podcaster is to do it with a co-host. It's just like going to the gym. If you do it together with somebody, you can motivate each other. You have someone there when stuff turns bad, when, when nobody listens. You have someone to talk about. You have someone who is on your team. So it's a lot easier to podcast with someone else. I don't recommend anyone really to start a podcast all by themselves. It's much harder to do. And a way to get around this if you can't find a co-host is to podcast to a small community that you're already part of. Say that you are in some sort of society for something and then you podcast that subject to them first and then to the general public. That will also help you get guests and we'll talk about guests in a much later episode because they are not the most important things in a podcast while your enthusiasm is the number one thing. So you have to do all you can to protect your enthusiasm. And the first thing I do is that I do not do boring things. I didn't sit here and make a fanciful PowerPoint presentation for you because that bores me. That would kill my enthusiasm and then you would never have this podcasting 101 series. And there are so many projects that never get launched because they are boring. They have boring components. I am bored by video editing, which probably made me a bad YouTuber or not at least not as good as I could have been, but I found it way too boring. And that's why I got into podcasting, because it includes less video editing. Uh, also, other things. You can, I am sure you know what bores you, but look out for these things. Do not do them. Find someone else to do them. Pay them if you have to. Or just find people that compliment you. Maybe your co-host. My co-host for Sagan om isfolket podden. And my new podcast that I haven't launched yet, I can't talk about. She is a radio journalist. She is a perfectionist. She knows how to interview people. I have no idea. I just talk to them. But she is a perfectionist and she loves audio editing. So guess who is editing the audio because I'm not going to do it because I find it boring. Fan interaction is a great way to protect your enthusiasm. Do stuff for your fans. Do stuff for your patrons. Do stuff that is fun for you. Listen to the good fans you have. Pay attention to your die-hard fans. Make the thing they want and they will give you enthusiasm back. Because I made a whole video about how you cannot waste your time and energy on haters and trolls. You are not only hurting yourself when you do that. When you're feeding trolls, you're hurting yourself. But you're also being unfaithful to the people who actually like your content. So care about them instead. 
Then we come to the controversial subject, money, which is now unthinkable to get money for podcasting in Sweden right now, because Sweden is a couple of years behind the US, and Patreon, for example, is a big thing in the US, and not as much used here. But if you have sponsors, if you have companies uh, doing paying you, if you actually earn money for your podcast, money cannot make a podcast. It's just like salary. Salary cannot make you happy, but it can prevent problems. So earning money for your podcast sorts of builds a cushion that you, you are buying the enthusiasm somehow, but it will make you be able to avoid boredom for a longer time. I will probably make a whole episode about why you need to earn money on your podcast. It doesn't have to be much, but money will protect your enthusiasm. So think about what makes you enthusiastic. Take a good look at yourself and think about the things you care about. Maybe you care a lot about meeting other people. Maybe you care about going to bars. Hell, podcast in a bar. Make sure these things that make you enthusiastic, the things you care about deep within, that they are part of this podcasting project. I think this is why you see, I'm sure it's going to come that companies will do podcasts. But why you see so few companies going into podcasting is because they are kind of bored from the start. So I, I'm not below. I, I could do a, a podcast for a company, but I would have to be really enthusiastic about it. And money will not be enough. So yeah, that's something else. But you can probably think about things that make you enthusiastic and put them in your podcast. And if you can think of something that I haven't talked about, please mention it in the comments of this video. Share the stuff that makes you enthusiastic. What builds your enthusiasm? I want to know. People want to know. Okay, I'm such a fanboy, but I am so impressed by Cameron Riley. He is an Australian. He podcasts uh, The Life of Caesar, Life of Alexander, Cold War, history podcasts. I come from a background of history podcasting. And he knows this. He can protect his enthusiasm. So he does unthinkable things in his podcast. Things that I can't recommend to anyone. Like playing 80s music. Suddenly there's just 80s music in the podcast. He's like, yeah, I, I can't imitate him, but he is, this reminds me of this 80s song. And suddenly in the middle of a long talk about Julius Caesar and some siege, there is an 80s song. And Cam and his co-host Ray, they go off on this. You can really sense how enthusiastic they become. And uh, it works for them. So find the ways that work for you. Also, Cameron podcasts uh, a lot with a guy he likes and uh, almost seems to love. So they, uh, yeah, uh, that's a good idea. Co-host. Also, Cameron does something else that I don't recommend. He thrives on hate. If you hate him and he's quite controversial, he uses very foul language. And when you hate him, he gets off on it. That builds his enthusiasm. He will berate his haters on the podcast. And that's pretty hard to do without coming off as a jerk. But Cameron does it. And uh, more power to him. If you want to talk to me about podcasting. I am, uh, if I have the time, I am very interested to share my tips. I'll do them here. But if you have any specific question, you can just ask me. Because I want to see more podcasts. I want to uh, help people get going. So I'm on Facebook. Uh, there is now a fan page for me where I share all my content. It's Dan Horning. I'm the only one in the world with this name. I'm on Twitter as Dan Horning because I managed to steal it from the American musician Dan Horning, who took the .com domain. So one one in our war. I'm on YouTube on this channel, and you're here already, so you know that. Uh, yeah, you'll find links to all my stuff elsewhere. So look it up. Thank you for watching.